Hello, boys and girls. It's Mike Kelly again from animatorsforum.com. Um, I'm going to, this is a public script I'm putting out there now called the uh, Swiss Army Bones is what the official name of this is. And I'm releasing this into the wild. Um, there may be still some bugs and problems. And of course, as always, if you have any issues with any of my scripts, feel free to get on our forum and post your problems and questions, uh, please do register on a forum. It's worth, I think, it for for nothing more than the camaraderie of great fellow animators. But anyway, so here's my script, and basically the idea behind the script, and this I'm going to go through this very quickly for the overview, and then I will um, talk about it in detail in separate videos, which I've already kind of done for some parts. But this is this is just an overview of how the script works, and basically. Uh, here's the Swiss Army Bones. I actually am, I am going to make another icon before I upload it tonight. i got to remember to do that. Um, and the idea behind it is it's kind of a universal Swiss Army tool in order to work on, on your bones. And as part of that tool, it includes some things which you can use whether you want to use the tool for manipulating bones or not. In other words, you can use all the regular bone manipulation tools and still use this tool for a couple of specialized functions that it does. Or you can use this tool as it's designed as kind of a general tool. You never have to touch or very seldom have to touch any other bone tools. So uh, let's explain how it works. Basically, uh, the bones in any particular rig are, are grabbed by default in the IK movement. And what that means is you grab whatever bone you grab is part of a chain. It manipulates all the bones in that chain. Uh, that's similar to one of these other tools up here. And then if you hold down the Alt key, then it only does the rotation of that particular bone that you're doing. So that's pretty straightforward. If you hold down the Control key, then it does a um, uh, the size function, does the scaling uh, of the bone. So that's what it does on a typical bone. On, on a root bone, and the root bone is the bone to which most of the other bones are parented to, uh, by default, it moves the root bone around, as you'll see, it moves there. There's no scaling on a root bone because it doesn't really mean anything to scale the root. Uh, and if you hold the Alt key, then you can rotate the root just like you would rotate the other bones on there. So that's the two basic functions of it. And then the other thing it does is on targets, it moves targets around in the same way it moves the roots around. So, so these are feet targets, and I'll talk about those later on in greater detail. Uh, but those are moved around, and once again, they, they don't scale because there's no point in scaling uh, a root target. You may want to manipulate by rotating them, uh, so you can do that if you want to rotate them out of the way or whatever. Uh, but that's basically about all you can do with the uh, target bones. Um, and I explained in my separate videos the difference between a, a parented and an unparented rig, but this will also parent and unparent. So right now, as you see, this is unparented, which means that this root is only controlling these bones that it's connected to, uh, but the targets are holding the feet down. If I want to parent this rig, then I can do the um, uh, sh sh shift alt. I don't know what the Mac keyboard shortcut is for that, but the, uh, the shift alt... Um, and then click anywhere in the rig, and now it's parented to that root bone. So now I can move around the whole rig by doing that. And then when I, uh, if I come over to here, then I can do Shift Alt and then unparent it. And now we're back to having that bone locked down that way. So that's useful. Uh, I'm a big believer in using foot targets. This will work even if your rigs don't use foot targets, but I highly recommend using foot targets. And then it simplifies the use of them because now, like I say, you can. If you get into a position where you need to, you can then just easily move the whole rig around by, by doing that. Uh, also, shift will uh, flip a bone. By default, it flips it on the, um, just flips it on the axis. I guess that would be the uh, horizontal flip. Or, and what the, well, I don't know what they call it. It's a horizontal flip. I don't know. I don't know, whatever it is. It's the, it's the flip that's, uh, that's the most useful, I think, for bones. If you want to flip it the other way, you can come up here. Uh, I'm sorry, I was just on the root bone at the time. Uh, if you want to flip it the other way, you can, you, uh, you can come up here and choose the icon for the flip, but it does that uh, as well. The only time it doesn't flip in that direction, which is to say the useful way across the width of the bone is for the actual root bone, which in most cases, it's more convenient to flip the root and flip the whole thing that way. So once again, if you wanted to flip it differently, uh, you, could, you could come up here and flip it uh, using these icons instead. So anyway, those are flipping. Now, 
all the things that you do to manipulate bones can and which create keys on the timeline can then be saved in the bone animation file and so uh i will uh demonstrate how to save this for i'm gonna get rid of some of these actually you know what i'm gonna i want to close this down for a second and not save the changes i'm gonna load this back up because i want to show you a couple other things real quick on this before i actually save an animation uh one of the other things it can do before we save this and i am going to save this is um, it creates walk cycles for you too and, and it can be walking running any kind of cycle in which one part of the body needs to be repeated for the other part of the body so in this particular case what i've done is i've defined one step and in my other videos i'm going to show how easy this is to do particularly with uh, bone foot targets but uh, this takes just seconds to define one nice step and then what you can do is then have uh, use this tool up here to mirror to the other side of the body so I will describe in details how that works, but basically all you do is just hit the mirror key and then it mirrors it over onto the other side of the body. So you notice now it has both steps in both positions. Um, again, I'm going to describe in more detail what, what these things do and, and how best to use them, uh, but for now at least know that, that you can do it that way. And then when you're satisfied with your particular animation, you can come up here and do a save and save it into a directory. And you want to save it into a directory called Bone Animations in your content directory because that's where it's going to look for those animations. So um, in this particular case, I already have a test walk. I could save it as test. And then the beauty of that is once you've created that animation, then you can load it in again on this rig uh, or another rig, as I'll show you in a second. And wherever you are in this rig, it will correctly place it depending upon uh, which which bone you've chosen as your um, as your target for that. So, for example, if I come over here and I want to uh, now create more walking, then I'm clicking on this particular. Um, well, actually, let me just get rid of all these keys for right now. Let me do this real quick. All right, so we're standing up straight. So if I have this root selected and I go here and then I go ahead and I go to load the test walk. And then it creates, uh, <laughs> it's using an old version of my script too. So, so it's got prompts in it. So it creates the, uh, the walking as you can see across there. And, and as he walks across, now if I'm here at this particular point in time and I, and I do another test walk, it then takes it from, it walks it from where it is there too. Also what it can do is you can pick any particular uh, target or the root, but you can pick a target and have it then progress from there. So for example, if I wanted this guy to start taking a step upward, I could bring it to here and raise this foot target up to here and then uh, key all those things so it stays there. Now if I load the test walk in, you'll see what happens is he starts from that upward position to raise that foot up and now notice he's, he starts taking the step and he goes upward from there. So now he's, he's walking upward from that particular point in time. I'm going to show more of this in detail on how to construct the mirrored walks and how to do those things. Anyway, that's the basic really quick overview without spending too much time on it to show you exactly how this works. Oh, I'll show you one thing real quick. It also uh, correctly adjusts it. If you'll notice this walk, take a look at this walk. This is a very big character. These legs on this character are as big as this whole entire character is here. If I were to load this walk cycle, in which this character takes very deep strides, notice how deep strides he takes, onto this character, normally this wouldn't work at all. This character would be squashed flat. But it also correctly sizes things up uh, and uh, by the, the width of the character itself. So if you go here, and I'll just show you this real quick while my wife is talking over my thing here. But if you do this real quick, you'll see that it, it actually correctly reassigns that size so it works. This won't work on all characters, but it will work on uh, the majority of characters. And um, anyway, so it, it, it'll, it's a good way to keep your rig separate. And, and you do have to have a name properly, but I'm going to talk about that more in another video. Let me get off while my wife is making noise in the background. So we'll talk to you later.